One of the most common problems that I see with people that are streaming is their audio levels aren't set up correctly. And actually streaming software nowadays has a feature built into it called audio ducking or side chaining or side chain compression. They all effectively mean the same thing, which allows the streaming software to control your audio volumes for you. The most common use case for audio ducking in streaming is for you to be able to set your music or your game volume. And then as soon as you start speaking, that music or game volume lowers to create some room for your voice. And when you stop speaking, the music or game volume returns back to normal. In this video, we're gonna be showing you exactly how you can set up audio ducking or side chaining for your own stream, no matter if you're using OBS Studio, OBS Live or Streamlabs OBS. So no matter what kind of streaming software you are using, OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, OBS Live, you wanna come down to the audio mixer here and you can see I have a very simple setup right now. I just have my microphone as one audio source and I have my desktop audio as the other audio source. And desktop audio that contains my game, my music, my friends on Discord. So it's a very, very simple setup. We want to apply the ducking to the desktop audio so that when our microphone activates, the desktop audio levels get reduced. So we come across here to the little settings cog uh, on the desktop audio, click it, go to filters. You want to add a compressor filter, so click the plus, go to compressor. I'd recommend naming this ducking. And then we have a whole handful of different settings here. I'll go through my settings of how I personally would set it up, but it's gonna be unique to you and your streaming environment. So definitely need to play around and uh, make sure you apply the learning of each setting. So let's start with ratio. Ratio is how much the audio source is gonna be reduced by. So a ratio of 10 to one means that uh, effectively the volume level will be 10% of what it was originally. So that might be a bit high. Let's go to something around four or five. Again, we can come back and play with this later when we actually know how it sounds. Threshold, this is the actual level that your microphone needs to hit for the ducking to occur. So minus 18 dB is a little bit high. I reckon set this around 40, somewhere around there. You can come down here and actually look at where your microphone level is sitting. So I'm saying whenever my microphone goes above 40 decibels or minus 40 decibels, uh, we want the ducking to occur. Attack and release in milliseconds. This is how quickly and slowly the ducking uh, transition will actually happen. So usually for a normal compressor, you want the attack to be very quick. But when it comes to ducking, we actually don't want a super quick attack time. I reckon sec setting this somewhere between 40 and 50 milliseconds sounds quite good because it's actually how quickly the music uh, volume transitions or the game volume transitions. So I reckon an attack of 50 milliseconds and a nice slow release of somewhere around 400, 500 milliseconds works well. Output gain you can leave as zero decibels. And finally, the most important thing is that you need to set the side chain or ducking source to be your microphone. Now with the ducking now applied, if I start playing some music and we have a look down at the audio meters, you can see that as soon as I start speaking, the audio levels of the music will drop. So I start speaking, the audio levels drop, and as soon as I stop speaking, the audio levels slowly return to their normal level. This is audio ducking. If you want to reduce the volume even more, you come up here and change the ratio to be higher. So if I change it to a ratio of, say, six, you can see now that the volume is even lower when I speak. Or if I really emphasize it by going to 10 or 11, the volume drops right down to around minus 40 decibels. So have a play around with the audio ducking feature in your streaming software. The easiest way to test it is actually to do a test recording, play around with the settings, do some speaking, do some silence, see exactly how it's gonna sound when it goes out to your stream. Hopefully you've enjoyed this short two minute tutorial. Let me know what you think of the video idea. It's something that I want to do maybe every single week. Uh, to break up some of the longer tutorial videos that I'm obviously going to keep releasing. So do let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.